The National Federation of the Blind Jernigan Institute, in partnership with the Johns Hopkins University Whiting School of Engineering and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and with the support of the National Science Foundation, UPS Foundation, American Honda Foundation, NEC Foundation of America, and the NFB Imagination Fund, presents the first ever National Federation of the Blind Youth Slam, shattering misconceptions, changing lives, and the voice of the next generation. I've heard that blind kids in science um, just doesn't work out, and I don't think that's true. I have taken any number of science courses, and I'm telling you that there are ways to do the work that you choose to do. And also, they always say, we cannot do this, and we cannot do that. I think that a, a blind student who comes here, we, you know, obviously we're in the lab right now, we got our sleeves rolled up, we're dug in, you know, we're really in the din of battle, uh, they're going to know that this is a, a, a possible thing and they can go to their parents and counselors and teachers and say, we know it can be done and they'll insist uh, that um, people make amends. People say, it's for your own good, it's better if you don't have to do it and the teacher will be like, here you can just get a hundred, does that make you feel better? Through the, this initiative we hope to remove the barriers that teachers have as to their perceptions relating to how blind students can perform laboratory experimentation. A lot of students go to science camp during the summer. But this camp is just a little bit different. At this summer camp, blind students are studying science hands-on. High school students from all across the country have come here to Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Our team of reporters is covering this event for you. Do you all realize that this week you will be engaging in a historic occasion? This will be the largest assembly of blind kids mentored by blind adults to happen in this country ever. So we need to teach people to go where their minds want them to go, learn what they want to learn, explore, find out, be excited about learning. That's what this U Slam is all about. In the morning, sessions began in everything from astronomy to windmills. And you're going to get to dissect that and look inside it. I wonder how thick this is. Can everybody feel the top of the skull? It's so you can learn anatomy tactually uh, by feeling the bones. They had models of bones of your body and where the brain is and how um, learning interesting facts. Those are what we call sutures. Hi, this is Cameron Lewis from Slam News. I'm here with Professor Joelle Frechette and we're here at the Gecko Project. So what we're trying to do is trying to understand or to explain, to show how geckos are able to climb walls. Well, they just had a gecko inside the ball, and you just put your hand inside the ball and put the gecko on your hand, and then you'd turn your hand upside down, and the gecko would stick. So now I'm going to set him in your hand. Oh, that feels weird. And so you can... Showing the, showing the forces that the gecko uses to stick to your hand. Hi, I'm Sam Taylor here with Jennifer, Melanie, and Caitlin. And, well, they just found a very good discovery here today. Um, as we were dissecting a shark during this activity this afternoon, we discovered um, that the female shark was pregnant and had at least three babies. So we were surprised, and we passed them around to everyone in the, in the lab. Okay, so you guys should be doing your incision. We have one already done. Gee, look at that. Look at that. The fish isn't there. Well, just the fish. Oh, come on. Oh, touch it. Hi, this is Chelsea, and I am with Slam News. I am covering the windmill track, and we are with Hope Crosser. She is the teacher of the windmill track. So tell us, how can pinwheels um, show wind energy? The forces that make a pinwheel spin around are the same ones that are going to make a wind turbine spin around. So one of the things that they're doing, for example, is they've built a regular pinwheel with the loops in it, like, like any pinwheel has, and then they built one that's just like that, only, only flattened. And when they put that in front of, the, front of the fan, it doesn't spin. 
So in comparing the two, they'll find the, for example, that the angles and the loops in the pinwheel are what's important to make it go around, not just the shape, it's, it's flat in shape. Hi, my name's Carolina. I'm in the wind tunnel with Amber. Hi. What are you guys um, doing with the windmills here? Um, we had to design our own windmills and we're just testing them in the tunnel to get some feedback before we uh, go talk and give presentations to engineers tomorrow morning. And what do you have to test with them? Um, we have to test how many volts and uh, microamps which is basically electricity it generates just from the wind blowing into it and how many rounds per minute. Wow. When mixing chemicals, people say, how can you do chemistry if you can't see the color changing? This is Eduardo Martinez reporting from the Environmental Chem Lab and we are with, what is your name? David Wollers. And what is your, what are you, what is your profession? I'm professor of chemistry at Truman State University. Okay, a question. How, how do sighty kids feel getting taught by a, bl a blind chemist? No, I never asked them. <laughs> okay. And what would be some advice for the future scientists or chemists? You just have to persist. You have to be a good traveler. You have to have good braille skills. You know, you have to be literate with computers. And uh, you have to have the, the desire and the perseverance to, to get to the end. Carbon has four bonds, and then it's also connected to an oxygen. This one right here, which has two bonds. The goal is to remove uh, the misconceptions of teachers as to the capabilities of blind people to do laboratory experimentation. And so a lot of what we're trying to do here is develop tools and, and in essence, establish a best practices suite of recommendations and tools for and make them available to teachers online and wherever they happen to be and allow and encourage teachers to implement these tools into their classrooms to allow their blind students to do laboratory uh, experimentation independently. Here at Youth Slam, this is the rocket track. All week we've been building rockets that we hope will launch and get back safely. Each rocket has an altimeter in it to measure the altitude we hope it will reach and an FM transmitter so we can find it when it comes down. Mach 1 is the best. Connect igniter. Make sure igniter leads and clips are not touching each other. Move key to the launch pad. Verify launch area is clear of people. Mandy's ready. Okay, let's pick up the count. Hey, Mario. Five, four, three, two, one. It's your show. We got the plan. There it goes. And it is a high one. Parachute is out. We are pretty much hitting the center of the field with a good shoot. And we are. How did your rocket go? 331 feet in the air. So how did they figure that out? Through the altimeter, which when you turn it on, once it's, once it's in your grasp, basically, you can turn it on and it'll he you'll hear a series of beeps. So we heard three beeps in a group, three beeps in another group, and then one beep. So that was 331 feet. This is Adam Maliala from Slam News, and you are? Myra Ramirez from Chicago. Cool. Some people say that, uh, why would a blind person want to launch a balloon if they can't see it? What are your thoughts about that? Well, people think that just because you are not capable of using your vision, that that's the only way. Well, they're wrong, because there's that you have plenty of ways of doing things, and you can use your mind to use to see things that you can't see. Well, all the balloons, they're going to go up to a certain altitude, we're guessing about 20 to 30,000 feet. And then after that, they're going to just pop, because uh, as the atmospheric pressure outside goes down, the balloons keep getting bigger until they're too big for the balloons. The balloons will pop, and then the payloads will come down. Hello there, this is Jordan Crawford here with the Slam News. How's your 
science um, experience changed so far since you've been in the Youth Slam? Well, I've gotten a lot more experience at, de at designing stuff. As I said, I was in the engineering group, and so we got to learn about different structural things that you have to consider while building bridges. It's one of those things where it's got to be uh, reliable, but you don't want it very expensive or else people aren't going to want to purchase the product. On Wednesday, we went to go visit the National Federation of the Blind's Jernigan Institute, where we took tours, we talked to exhibitors, and we got to interview some very important people, including the National Federation of the Blind's President Mark Maurer. I used my hands. In order to learn how to do things, blind people need to use their hands. You've got to touch it. You've got to reach out. You've got to explore the terrain. It wasn't all work. Evenings were for fun. On our last day, we concluded Youth Slam with a march to the National Federation of the Blind. This is a youth march for independence, marching by the blind of the nation, coming here to show the capacity of blind people. We do it for ourselves. We do it to demonstrate it to us, but also to show everybody, the public and the blind from around the country, that we can do it, that we are on the move, that we can build our own lives, and that's what this march is all about. It's the next generation in the house! As the Youth Slam ends, a new chapter will begin. The students and mentors will take home with them a new perspective on how blind people interact with science. And even something more important, our freedom as blind people to pursue our destiny and our dreams without barriers. The National Federation of the Blind Youth Slam is an example of the work that is happening in the NFB Jernigan Institute. We are empowering blind youth with the attitudes, skills, and leadership that blind people have been harnessing for over half a century so that they may determine their own future and imagine new possibilities. That element, the blind, speaking, dreaming, and building for themselves is what makes the Federation effective, what makes our Institute innovative, and what has and will positively change the lives of blind people for decades to come. The participants in the NFB Youth Slam would like to thank Access Computing Alliance, American Chemical Society, American Printing House for the Blind, Baltimore City Community College, Fort Worth Star Telegram, Freedom Scientific, Humanware, M&T Bank, Maryland Space Grant Consortium, Northrop Grumman Foundation, Recording for the Blind and Dyslexic, Verizon Foundation, Westminster Astronomical Society, You Can Do Astronomy, LLC, our Youth March for Independence supporters, Pepsi and Walmart, and the hundreds of members of the National Federation of the Blind whose dedication and hard work turned this dream into reality.